Yo, what's going on, guys? Hopefully your day is okay. Hopefully you're enjoying Mid-Year Mayhem. It's your boy Horcrux here today. I'm going to be bringing you my Magic of DK PvP build. A lot of trial and error has went into this, but I think I finally got it, guys. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So here's a quick look at the character sheet. I'm a Dark Elf. Ideally, you probably want to be Breton. So keep that in mind, High Elf, Breton, Imperial, Imperial, it really doesn't matter, to be honest. But uh, Breton is the best in slot. So here's character sheet, completely unbuffed. Kind of take a look at our resistances, our back bar. We got a nice 30k spell resist. This goes up with Blood Spawn, spoiler alert, already. Uh, we do have 5k spell damage, so let me just go ahead and show you guys that real fast. Bada bing, bada boom, we got 51 Actually, with a 27% crit ratio, which is really good because we're not running Malakanth, even though Malakanth is kind of buffed a little bit in a roundabout way. Uh, Malakanth is a really good alternative, but since we're running a lot of light on this build to deal to help with our sustain and damage output, uh, we have to compensate somehow. So, character sheet. Um, right now, I'm running the Arteum, a fishbowl. This is the purple bicep food. The reason I'm able to get away with running this is because I am Dark Elf. Now, if you're Breton, I would probably run the uh, the tricep foods, the Bewitch Sugar Skulls. But since I am a Dark Elf, I have enough stamina to where I can just run biceps to get away with it. And since health recovery has been nerfed into the ground, uh, Bewitch Sugar Skulls health recovery bonus that you get really isn't all that important anymore. So, we're in the Lady, and again, since we're running 5 Light on this build, we do need a little bit more resistances, because we do get hit by a Spin to Win Donnie, it really fucking hurts in Light Armor, so you have to be ready for that. And, of course, the double XP. Alright, so, skills, uh, that's Craft Bag, so, sets, actually, um, <clears throat> that does not start with R-O-S, uh, R, um, yeah, I'm having a hard time, fellas. <laughs> Oh my god, I feel so stupid. Okay, now we're good. Alright, so... First, we're running Vet Strands Inferno Staff. I've yet to get a perfected one. All the I got four perfected ones, and they're all great swords or bows. And so, if you have the perfected version, definitely run it. But Vet Strands Inferno Staff, I have this bitch Nernhund as well. Because we don't really need any sustain with Charged. Before, I was running Charged... And I was running charge and atro before, okay? And I was over sustaining. So I took off charge, swapped to Nernhorn, over sustaining. I took away atro, swapped it to lady. And now we're right at a perfect balance of magic and regeneration. Even though at the beginning you saw it was under a thousand, well, we're using probably one of the best sustained sets in the game, which I will cover in just a moment. We're running a shock damage and glyph because we still do have a really high chance to proc concuss on your opponents, whoever you're targeting, to amplify that damage. Back bar running burning spell weave. I'm running a restoration staff. Now you can either run a rest of staff or an eye staff. Um, this procs 100% of the time, like on your back bar, is super reliable, you don't have to wait on it. So I'll just go ahead and show you. Boom, as soon as I swap to my back bar, I bring Spell Weave active. So you don't necessarily have to have this on your front bar, contrary to popular belief. So, defending, weapon damage enchantment, again, you lie attack on your back bar to get your weapon damage proc along with your burning Spell Weave. This is an extra 1000 spell damage, it's going to carry over to your front bar, or just however you need it because the more spell damage equals more healing equals more damage you guys get it so this on the back bar again you can run frost staff if you want to be a little bit more tankier and block but you don't have access to rapid regen which we will cover in just a moment running blood spawn this is such an invaluable set since proc sets are kind of meh especially on the dk where you have to build such heavy resistances to really get anything done it's hard for you to cap out on damage and sustain and tankiness and mobility you just can't do it on dk so what i'm trying to say is blood spawn this gives you the tankiness that you need you actually do get a little over 33k um, resistances when this procs plus it gives you a shit ton of ult and because of your battle roar passive that's a lot more resource management uh, as well you have to play around with okay so all around good set, plus it gives you stamina regen, why not? I do have try stats on all the big pieces just to maximize your health pool because you do have to have a big health pool. There's a lot of bursty boys out there right now, and I would not be caught dead without at least, at least 26, 27k health in Cyrodiil right now. 
Yep, uh, medium shoulders here. Yada yada. I don't have this gold probably because I don't know. Drew, Drew Axe is twenty thousand per unit, so we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. But last set we're running here is Jerk and Rose. This is on both bars. I tried running it on just one bar. Um, what I found happening is if you're on your back bar, which I, is how I had it, you have a lot of sustain on your back bar, but when you go to your front bar and go on offensive, you actually run out really quick. So it's very important for you to double slot this on both bars. It doesn't matter how you arrange the pieces, but you definitely need it on both bars. This set is three times as good as Lich and it's much more reliable. Okay. Even if you choose to run Vampire on this build, it's really good because while you're in your mist form, when you're getting hit, you get Magicka back as well. Um, I did trial out Vampire on this build. I really liked it. It was surprisingly not bad. You didn't notice the cost increase at all. I mean, I, I didn't anyway, especially with running Desert Rose. But it's the play style yet again, guys. I don't like just floating around in mist form. It's so boring. Like, if you're going to die, you're going to die. You know, get it over with. And I've tried to run Miss 4 in the past few days, and they just, they're just so relentless, dude. They do not stop humping your dick. You, you cannot get away. Like, even if you run Miss 4, you just cannot get away. So just, just accept your death. Get on to the next 1VX. Uh, most of the traits are sturdy or in pin. Um, I would almost have reinforced on this big piece, but uh, we have enough resistances to get us through. The, the whole point of this patch is to, well not this patch, but the Midyear Mayhem is push high damage as you can. And kind of just be able to live burst. I mean, you don't have to be super tanky right now because there are a lot of newer players. They kind of don't know what's going on. So it's very important for you to just kill those guys really quick. Instead of being super tanky, you know. So there's a lot more of healers, I've noticed. So you got to have the damage to burst these kids. So as I've said, try to on the big pieces of jewelry. All spell damage. Uh, you don't need a sustain, I swear to God, guys. Horcrux will not lead you wrong. At the clips at the beginning, you saw my magical pool never dropped below like 50% at any time. And that's me spamming wings, spamming coag, being very... Uh, what's the word? Inefficient with my resource usage. It doesn't matter. You can just spam whatever you want as long as you're in combat. So that does it for the sets. So we'll go hop over to skills. A very basic DK skill setup. Engulfing Flames, Fossilize, Ellie Drain, this is a proc vet trim. And it's just really good. Makes you do like 10% more damage and it's like 300, uh, 320 magic recovery effectively. Flame Lash. Uh, I tried Molten Whip. If you're solo, uh, you kind of need Flame Lash to get Power Lash. Uh, I crush on these hills a lot. Like The very first thing I do is try to get Power Lashes off to go and get the healing going. It's very unforgiving if you're running Molten Whip. Um, the healing sometimes is there, but uh, if you're running solo, I just think it's better off to run Power Lash. If you're in a group, yeah, go Molten Whip. Get those Seething Fury stacks up on one tap, kids. Burning Embers. Ferocious Leap. Spec bar, rapid regeneration, one of my favorite skills in the game. I'll kind of show you how high this actually goes on tooltip, okay? It's it's pretty phenomenal. So this goes up like 25k. So this is like a 12,000 tick in Cyrodiil. Or 12.5k tick in Cyrodiil over 5 seconds. It's a humongous heal plus it can crit. Coagulate, uh, on her back bar, oh shit button. Um, you can spam the fuck out of this, guys. I'm not even kidding. With Desert Rose, like, don't be afraid to use this. You're not going to run out of magic. I cannot stress that enough. That should probably be another thumbnail. This set is damn near broken. It, it, it actually needs to tone down. It's Give it a try. It's pretty cheap. You can find it anywhere. It's a very slept-on set. Give it a try. Dragonfire Scale. I am a firm believer in this skill. Most DKs, especially like Nern Storm, Nern Storm, like they don't run wings. I don't know how you guys get away with it. I get hit by so much shit so fast, so hard. It doesn't matter what your resistances are. This is the only way to mitigate the snipe spams and overload spams from Sorix. Plus, it does a shit ton of damage, and you have a lot of turnaround potential when these things proc. Literally every half a second, it's hitting just as hard as a Flames of, of Oblivion proc. Okay, guys, I sound like a broken record in all my videos. I always praise this ability is absolutely phenomenal give it a try volatile armor this is your uh, major resolve buff uh, i actually apply this every 10 seconds to apply this dot it's actually a pretty heavy hitting dot and the aoe is pretty huge on it to pull people out of stealth look i'm already over here 
and I'm hitting them. So you can pull people out of cell pretty easy if you don't have any pots up. Uh, detect pots up at the time. Race against time. This is your only source of mobility. Yeah, I can run the wings that kind of remove mobility, but uh, it's just don't. It's just it's, it, it doesn't do it for long enough. Plus, it doesn't give you major expedition. Race against time. So good. I tried using uh, the other one, the, the, the channel acceleration. No, you get stuck in your cast animation. And you just need the instant snare removal and running speed. This is all you need. This is your only source of mobility, so you gotta have it on the bar somewhere. Temporal Guard. Um, if you are running Vampire, you could almost run the Blood Scion. Um, if you are a Vampire, which you can't, you can definitely run Vampire. Take off Race Against Time and put on Misform. It works just as well. So, if you're not Vampire, Race Against Time, Temporal Guard. If you are a Vampire, you need Elusive Mist and Blood Scion. Uh, that's how I would run that. And that's pretty much the build, guys. If you're wondering where your major sorcery is at, I always use the uh, the Alliance Spell Drought Potions. They're super cheap. You don't have to go out and buy them. It's essentially the Essence of Spell Power Potions, just serial form. Uh, they do everything, give you a recovery, crit. We do have a pretty decent amount of crit, 27%, so don't sleep on that. And the last thing we really need to go to is our CP tree. I'm very firm about this CP tree, especially the blue tree. So obviously, you're going to have a lot more CP than I do, because I only have like 940. But the big passives that you need, Deadly Aim, Biting Aura, Mastered Arms, last but not least, go with Duel's Rebuff. Um, Duel's Rebuff, a lot of Night Blades, a lot of Sorks. This kind of mitigates most of that. And notice I don't have any points in Thaumaturge. You need a Burst Kids. It doesn't matter how hard your dots hit. Um, it just doesn't really matter. That that's not where your kill potential is coming from. Your kill potential is coming from, you know, obviously a little bit of the dots to kind of soften them up, but from your weep, from your, from your weep, from your leap and your whip. So you need to bolster those as much as possible, and you do that by allocating these three passives. Going to the red tree, I'm running survival instincts. I'm pretty sure this is bugged right now. Is in in your favor because. A lot of the times you do get these permanent status effects on your character until you relog or uh, reload the game. This takes into consideration that status effect. So essentially just having this passive slotted, all your abilities will cost 25% less if you are fortunate slash unfortunate enough to have one of those permanent status effects on you. And you'll know it's on you because you'll fucking hear it and you'll see the particle animations for it <laughs> like the whole time. Uh, balance Vitality. Uh, th this one you can kind of put wherever I feel that I need more health to survive burst right now, so I haven't balanced vitality. This is kind of a flex one. Rejuvenation, this is really good. Just gives you uh, 150 recovery for everything across the board. And then Juggernaut, while you're under the effects of crowd control immunity, you essentially take 10% less damage. Green Tree, it really doesn't matter, guys. Just uh, just have your war mount and your uh, gifted rider passives. And that's really about it, to be honest. So this has been the build. Hopefully you enjoyed the clips. Hopefully you guys are having a really great time in the Meteor Mayhem event. It's actually pretty fun right now, not going to lie. I did play with my buddy Pun earlier. It's the first time I've actually partied up with anyone in quite some time. And the little time we did play, we dicked a lot of kids down. Uh, so hopefully you guys are making friends and not enemies. If you're, I will say this on a closing note. If you see me in open world and I teabag you, you're probably a Nightblade. Correct me if I'm wrong. Don't take it personal. I just teabag all night blades. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and comment. But please, please, please only do so if you actually enjoyed the content. Thanks, guys. And uh, yeah, peace.